Are you frustrated with online dating? Confused by all the new apps and fancy dating sites? Do you find yourself choosing the wrong person again and again? Well, studies show that hiring a dating coach can maximize your online dating experience. So no worries, I've got you. And I've created a virtual course called Doing Dating Right. It's a five video series that you can complete at your own pace in your own space, right at home. How to write your online dating bio, pick that perfect picture, and so much more. Want more info? Go to my website at jenniferherbits.com. Again, it's jenniferherbits.com. Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. It's Friday, and this is a Just Jen episode. I love doing these Just Jens. This is Doing Relationships Right. Welcome, welcome. If you don't know me, I'm Jennifer Hervitz. And if you do know me, then hi, you. What's happening? Okay, so today um, I'm going to talk about something that um, a couple people actually reached out to me about um, on my Facebook group, Doing Relationships Right Facebook group. It's a private group. And um, somebody asked me, a couple people asked me actually, if I would do a show, uh, an episode on dating apps safety, like the safety on dating apps, how to be safe when you're dating with all these new apps out. Um, A lot of them have video components to them, which I love, which make them safe already. Um, But yeah, so I thought that I'd do a little, you know, tidbit on that. And actually I I have done in the past um, blogs on safety on dating apps and um, articles about them and stuff. And I've also actually, I think I did an episode last year about safety. I'm pretty sure, but I'm going to do another one anyway. And um, let's, let's do it. So as you all know, dating apps, um, they're a little bit scary. I think they're a little scary. And when I was dating, not going to lie, I was horrified a bunch of times. I was actually involved in an FBI, <laughs> an FBI. I'm laughing because I, I laugh when I get nervous. But yes, I was involved in a case where I was um, on OkCupid, where I was actually, um, my bank account was hacked, my, um, my shit was taken, you know, like all that stuff, because I did not know um, these signs, the signs of like how to know when someone is taking advantage of you. And now that I know, um, and you know, I, look, it happens to all of us. It it really can happen to everyone. I think I'm a pretty smart cookie. Um, I think I'm pretty in tune to people around me, but you know, six years ago, five, six years ago when I was dating online, maybe my head wasn't really where it was supposed to be. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places, who knows, but, um, yeah, there are some things that you need to really look out for. So I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to tell you, um, a couple big red flags for people who are on dating apps um, if you need to look for. So first of all, if someone claims to um, be widowed, they, they're they they're like, you know, look at, I I just lost my husband or I just lost my wife and, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm looking for $5,000. I can't afford my blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, please, like, please, false red, red flag right there. Now, obviously, if they have widowed on their profile and, um, you know, you talk about it and you, and you know, they've lost a, their wife, their wife or their husband. That's one thing. But if someone's asking for money along with the fact that they're widowed, um, a lot of people say they're in the military or they're overseas and they can't, um, can you please send them money so they can get back? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, if they're working, they live, they're from the United States, but they're working and traveling globally. That's a big red flag. If they ask for financial assistance ever, if anybody ever asks for money, you're that kind of shit, you know, that they're, that that's just trouble, trouble in the making right there. Um, also another big red flag, which I tend to kind of overlook sometimes because I think people, I think I give them the benefit of the doubt. I think that they're just nervous. If you ask them a specific question and you don't get an answer, they're really vague or they're, they're wishy-washy or, you know, like a simple question, like how many kids do you have? And it's not, there should be a specific answer to that question. I have two. I have a boy and a girl. I have whatever. If someone can't answer you specifically a question that specific or, hey, you know, where do you live? If they can't answer that question, that's a huge red flag. They're hiding something. Um, you know, that's that's not okay. So that's a huge red flag. Um, also, um, if they're constantly telling you stories and they don't match up, like grandiose stories, like big, huge stories, and then the next day you talk and or you're texting and you catch them in a lie. That's typically a red flag. Also, trust your gut, right? If you're talking to someone or texting with someone and it doesn't feel right or it doesn't sit right, it usually is not right. So really, you know, you've got to trust your intuition and your gut. And I'm a firm believer that if someone can't give you their full name, uh, you don't go out with them. 
because you need to do your research. And I think everybody nowadays does their quote unquote research. I think you need to Google someone. I'm a firm believer that you should, if you have to do a background check, go ahead and do it. People think I'm crazy, but after the stuff that I've gone through, I will run a background check. Um, I actually went out with a guy who told me that his name was something. I actually dated him for three weeks and found out he was someone else. So this is, this is legit stuff that happens to the best of us. So do your research. Check him out online. Make sure who he is who he is. I actually, the guy in Okie Cupid told me he was someone and the person that he, that he was pretending to be was dead. <laughs> so this shit happens, you guys, to the best of us. I can, I can write books all day long about it. In fact, I just might. Um, so that's your online safety. Also, if you can get onto a, um, a video chat, um, a FaceTime, or at least a phone call before you meet this person in person, in real life, that's the least you should do before you meet someone, um, especially nowadays. Like, you know, you should be able to get someone, if someone fights you, like to get on a FaceTime, or it's like, I'm, you know, I, I don't really, I'm not really great at texting, or I don't really believe in FaceTime, or I want to meet you in person, I don't want to show you my face, eh, 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 eh. I would kind of, I would kind of put my foot down and I would say, you know what? I really kind of need to do a, a Zoom with you or a FaceTime or at least a phone conversation in the least. If co-parenting during a pandemic taught us anything, it's that you need proof your kids are safe. With alcohol abuse on the rise, many co-parents are turning to the no-nonsense system committed to providing proof, protection, and peace of mind. Soberlink's alcohol monitoring system is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to provide evidence that they are not drinking during parenting time. Soberlink's real-time alerts make it easy to negotiate with any party. Judges rest assured the child is safe. Attorneys get court admissible evidence of sobriety, and both parents have empowerment and peace of mind. Do divorce right and trust the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology to keep your kids safe happy, and well-adjusted. For an exclusive $50 off your device and to download five negotiables for embracing a new normal I developed with Soberlink, visit www.soberlink.com backslash DRR. I would not meet someone anymore if I was dating in real life without at least speaking to them on the phone, period. Now, I know I'm going quickly here, but I like to keep these micro episodes under 10 minutes so you guys don't hate me and think that I'm annoying. So let's go to public places. I have my notes here. See, if you can hear you. Um, oh, and also like block people. Like if someone sends you a, a message, right, and it's shady or it's weird or they're asking for news and you're not into that stuff and, and you know, and their bio is shady or something about them is what, block them. Don't be afraid to block people. You don't know these people right? If you're texting back and forth to them for 15 minutes and you get a weird, like funky feeling and, and block them, report them. If someone asks you for money, report them to the, you know, the dating app site to the people. I reported this person to, to OkCupid. They were on him like flies and shit. Okay. No one wants anybody to get hurt here. Right? So yes, report these people, avoid shady bios, um, that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, when you're meeting, I like to have an exit strategy. I like to call, I like to have love rules, love rules for dating. And I like to tell my clients, especially when they are going on dates, um, men and women both, you need to tell a friend, you know, especially on a first date, you need to tell a friend where you're going. Now, a friend that you trust, obviously, you know, you don't need to tell the whole world, I'm going on a date, my first date with so-and-so, no. But if you're going to meet someone for the first time, I suggest that A, you keep it short and sweet. You consider it a meet, not a date. Uh, 20 minutes and under, maybe it's ice cream, maybe it's a drink, maybe it's a coffee date, but it's in a public place. I do not suggest going for a walk in the park on a first date. And if you haven't seen this person on a Zoom or a FaceTime, I never would tell my clients to go for a walk in the park on a first date. No. It needs to be somewhere public um, with people around you. I would rather that you go during the day, women and men, rather you go during the day than at nighttime. Um, absolutely. And I also think that you it's important that you drive your own vehicle, 
that he does, he or she does, you don't, you don't like get in one, have one car when you're there, because if you want to leave, if your exit strategy is to leave, um, if you don't like this person, you don't have a, you don't have a way home. Okay. Um, if he drove you there, he picked you up. Uh, I also think it's important to look, if you need help to, you know, ask the bartender or your waitress, say, look, you know, he goes to the bathroom or you, you, you say, I, I need help here, or I'm uncomfortable. Can you help me out here? I used to go on dates back in the day to Dean and DeLuca, and I used to make my dates there all the time. And I used to say, let's go to Dean and DeLuca for a drink at the bar. And Scott, the bartender, was my friend, and he watched me, and he took care of me, and he knew that if I was in trouble, he was I, I had him there to help me get out of these dates that were horrific, and he did. So I think that's really important that you know an exit strategy. Maybe you have a friend that texts you 20 minutes in and says, are you okay? And you give her a code code word like pineapple. Look, people think, you know, that you don't need this kind of stuff. And I hope you never do. And I hope that your dates are wonderful. And I hope that every person you meet is fantastic. But the one time that you have a guy lick your face, yes, it happened to me. I had a guy lick my face from my chin to, I swear to you, the face licker, read my blog. Or you have a guy that treats you wrong, wrongly, is it an adverb? That treats you poorly. There you go. Uh, you're going to want to get out of that scenario and you're going to want to leave that scene. Scene, you're going to want out. You're going to wish you had an exit strategy. So you need to have a, a plan of action to get out of that date. And how about this? How about this exit strategy? I'm leaving. This isn't working. It was nice to meet you. I'm sure that someone out there is perfect for you, but it's not me. And you get up. And you say, you know what, this one's on me. You put down 10 bucks for the ice cream cone or whatever it is, and you leave. There's no shame in this dating game. That's all I have to say about it. But it is important that you are safe in a public place, that you are in a well-lit area. If he walks you to your car, it's well-lit because that's where I got my face licked. Uh, you drive your own car or you take your own mode of transportation. You have Uber app if you need to go home. And... Um, you know, you have someone around you that can get you out of this, this crap, a bartender to help you or a friend. And I'm sticking to it. And I'm at 10 minutes. Look at that. Micro episode 10 minutes. It's a just Jen. Those are my exit strategies, my safety for dating 101, dating safety 101. And I'm sticking to it. So that's all there is to it. So if you have any questions for me, you know that you can reach me or find me on Instagram. Yes, yes, yes. Instagram, my Facebook page, my Facebook group. I have a coaching page. I have a Facebook group. Please join it. We love to talk. It's anonymous now. So you can ask questions without your name. We love to chit chat over there. It's really fun on Facebook. And I also have um, Pinterest. I have a YouTube channel so you can see me live. Uh, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, everything. I got it all. So come and hang out with me and it'll be fun. And I don't know when you're hearing this, but if you want to come have some real fun in person, in real life, I'm heading to the beach. So let me think about this. October 22nd through the 24th, I'm going to be in Hilton Head, South Carolina with my girls from My Divorce Solution. We are doing the Mrs. To Me Summit. Become your best self after divorce. You can be thinking about divorce. You can be going through a divorce. You can be divorced 10 years. You could be married and you know want to hear about divorce because you have a friend that's going through it or a family member. Uh, tickets are on sale right now. So please grab yours. Uh, the link is in my bio on Instagram. I'm also going to leave a link uh, in my show notes here. And I'll tell you something. It's going to be a great time. It is good. We have 15 fabulous speakers. We have beach. We have pool. We have fun. It's going to be positive, uplifting, and fabulous. And I um, will be there. So I think you should come join me. You, 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 and you. Yes, yes. So that's it. So everybody, it's been fabulous talking about dating and safety and all that good stuff. So come and meet me at the beach, uh, October 24th through the 20, no, 22nd through the 24th. Besides that, do something fabulous this weekend. This is Friday. This is a Just Jen episode and I'm Jennifer Hurwitz. You can find me everywhere, especially easily at jenniferhurwitz.com. As usual, peace, love, and so much truth. Bye everybody. Have a great weekend.